generation by generation how the computer will looks like a in a modern way in the year of 1971 to 1980 they introduced the microprocessor for the computer a plotter is type of output device that used to produce a high quality of graphics when i fetch the data from the primary memory the processing speed will be fast hello students this is asha faculty of computer science in vidyasham first grade degree college the temple of excellence mysuru so in today's session we discuss about the fundamentals of computers in last session you already get to know what are all the syllabus contents and how the marks will be distributed so in today's session we discuss about some fundamentals of the computer that is the first chapter under your digital computer organization as per the university syllabus that is scp so let's discuss one by one topic in today's session we get to know what are all the contents under the fundamentals of computers so fundamentals is nothing but the computer definition and also some characters of the computer and also some block diagram of the computer and history and evolution and generations of the computer and some input and output devices and also memory devices so let's see in today's session agenda the fundamentals of computers under that the first one definition of the computer characters of, of the computer and also evolution and history of the computer generation there are five generations under the computer and next input output organization means input output devices and also peripheral devices and also memory under the memory you will see types of memory and also what are all the characters so let's see one by one in today's session so the first unit completely theory part you have to get to know what are all the contents so the first one definition of the computer so definition of the computer is nothing but you can see this is your computer how it looks like the definition of the computer is a basically electronic machine without the power supply it cannot be worked right so likewise it's a machine that takes the raw data or else the commands or else the input input or the information through the input devices or else the input hardware so through the data they can take the raw data and also performs some calculation or as some processing and after that they produce some output through the output devices so produce output in the format of desired format desired format is nothing but audio video or as a uh, projection these are all come under the desired format so computer is also device that stores the as well as process information electronically so computer is basically electronic devices which takes the input or the raw data or else the information and process it after the process it will produce the output as the user's desired format this is all about the what do you mean by computer so let's see next one so here are the some characters of the computers under the character you will get to know what is the speed accuracy and reliability and also some more in next slide so the first one speed so computer for example i have to calculate 25 into 455 as a human being when i calculate this manually i'll take some more time right to calculate but when i give this input or the information to my computer it will immediately calculate and process it and display the output to the user so that is the speed taken around 0.1 second not a minute 0.1 second within a second it will computer are fast and can perform arithmetic not only arithmetic operation it also perform some other format also that is the logical operations very quickly means quickly in the sense it display the information very rapidly means in a second so the next one accuracy take this example 25 into 455 when i calculate i made some mistake for example i got a 1045 1045 but i got some wrong answer but when i give this into the computer it will give a accurate result without any errors that is called the accuracy so computers are very accurate but only if the input is correct when i give the input is correct it will give the correct answer with accurate result the next one reliable a reliable computer perform its functions consistently without any errors and also 
failures. So without any errors and also failure while giving input and processing and gives the output with the reliable format. So next see what are all the other characters. Let's see another two characteristics of the computer. There are five important characteristics under the computer. The first one accuracy, speed, uh, reliability and also versatility and storage. So for versatility, what do you mean by versatility means? So computers can perform multiple tasks at once and complete variety of tasks without the tiredness. So as a human being, when I work, keep on working. For example, I can work up to eight hours, but I can get tired, right? So for example, computer is an electronic device because it doesn't have any feelings or it doesn't have any IQ. So if we keep on working with the computer, it will never get tired. That is what versatility come to storage. So for example, if I want to store something in the computer because computer is an electronic device and also storing device. So computers can store data, but amount information that can be stored is a finite means we can store up to terabyte or also gigabyte or means GB or else TB up to TB or else hard drives, pen drives. These are all the storage devices. So in the upcoming slides, we can see what are all the storage devices. These are all computer characteristics. The next one is block diagram of the computer. Look carefully. This is the most important one. So this will contain input unit and CPU and also output devices, mainly which has three blocks, input block, CPU, uh, next one output block. So let's see input unit which uses the input devices as it take the raw data or the information through the input devices. For example, mouse, keyboard, RS, joystick. These are all the come under the input devices. So when the input is go to the CPU, central processing means CPU we call the brain of the computer, right? Brain, brain of the computer brain of the computer is nothing but CPU. Under the CPU again you have control unit, arithmetic and logic unit and also memory unit. So you can see control unit, it will control all the operation for example file handling or file deletion or as the file processing or as how the input and output will be displayed through some application. These are all controlled by the control unit. And the next one, any arithmetic operation, arithmetic operation means, for example, arithmetic plus, minus, and also division, modulus, division, and also and means logical. Logical operation takes under the arithmetic and also logic unit. So, and the next one, after any processing the data, the data will be stored, right, in the memory section, that is, memory unit. These are all come under the central processing unit. And the lastly, after processing the result, it will be displayed through the output devices that is called output. So through the monitor, printer, plotter, these are all come under the output unit. So in the next upcoming slides, we can get to know what are all the input device and what are all the output device. This is all about the block diagram of the computer. So in the next slide, you can see evolution of the computer. So evolution is nothing but in the previous days before the computer is invented, the people are used to calculate any values. They use some sticks, stones and also bones as a counting tools or the devices. So let's see one by one. So what are all the counting devices to calculate the operations? So in the history of computer, so we can see one by one, what are all the tools they use to calculate. The first one is abacus. So here you can see the clear picture of abacus how it looks like. So abacus is nothing but a wooden rack which has metal rods with beads mounted on them. The beads were moved by the abacus. So here you can see the wooden rack with the beads inside the metal rods. So when I calculate, when I calculate 2 plus 3, I got a 5 as result. So here the beads were moved. 2 plus 3 is how much? 5. Likewise, the use for calculating or arithmetic operation, mainly the abacus is used. And also some rules to perform arithmetic calculation. Abacus is still used in some countries like China or else 
एशिया और एल्स रशिया जापान सो इन दीज कंट्रीज दे स्टिल यूज दिस अबैकस सो द नेक्स्ट वन अंडर द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ कंप्यूटर और एल्स हिस्ट्री ऑफ द कंप्यूटर द नेक्स्ट वन नेपर्स बोन्स सो हियर यू कैन सी the clear picture of the neighbor's bone how it looks like the neighbor's bone is manually operated calculating device which was invented by john napier in the year of 1550 1617 so in this calculating tool they use nine different ivory bones so here you can see under the rows and under the columns they used only nine so mainly for the multiplication and also for the division they use this tool called napier's bones and the next one pascaline pascaline is nothing but is also known as arithmetic machine or adding machine so here you can see the clear picture of pascaline they use mainly for they invented the pascaline in the year of 1642 to 1644 by french mathematician called philosopher base pascal so that's why the name as pascaline device so it is believed it was the first mechanical and automatic calculator so mainly used for the arithmetic calculations so let's see after the pascaline what are all the devices under evolution and history of the computer the first one is again the analytical engine and also tabulating machine so these are all the uh, devices they used under the evolution and history of the computer so here you can see analytical engine is nothing but this calculating machine was also developed by charles babbage so charles babbage is the author of the or inventor of the computer right so in the year of 1830 it was mechanical computer that used to punch cards as input it was capable of solving solving any mathematical problem and storing information as the permanent memory so here you can see the clear picture of analytical engine and the next one is tabulating machine a machine it was invented in the 1890 and by herman hollerith an american statistician so it was a mechanical tabulator based on punch cards so here you can see the clear picture of the tabulating machine for tabulate statistical so and also sort of data they use the tabulating machine so these five devices comes under the evolution and history of the computer in the next slide see generations of the computer so in the history of computers we often refer to the advancement of a modern computer as the generation of computers how the computer will be advanced under day by day or is the generation by generation how the computer will looks like a in a modern way so we are currently in the fifth generation fifth generation is nothing but artificial intelligence so we are currently in the artificial intelligence generation so let us look at the important feature of these five generation mainly there are five generations under the generations of the computer let's see the first two generation so here you can see the first generation and the first generation images so these are all the vacuum tubes they are mainly used the vacuum tubes so the first generation which comes under the 1940 to 1955 in the era of 1945 to 1955 they invented the first generation computers so they used the vacuum tubes for the circuitry for the purpose of memory they used magnetic drums for example INIAC and UNIVAC and EDVAC these are all some example for the first generation so this is the vacuum tube they mainly use for the storing of the data because it's more sensible and also which cost higher than the fifth generation computer because it looks like a glass so which is made up of the glass so this is very sensible to the environment so it is very expensive so in the second generation we can see what are all the second generation so here in the second generation 1957 to 1963 were referred to the second generation computers at that time in the second generation computers cobol and fortran are employed as assembly languages and programming language here they advance from vacuum tubes to transistors so what do you mean by transistor so here you can see this is the transistor or else we can say this is also so transistor these are all the 
after the vacuum tips they use the transistor for the memory purpose or storing purpose so example we can see ibm 1620 ibm 724 these are all come under the second generation examples yes the next generation is third generation in the third generation they introduce the integrated circuit is made up of the many transistors they use the transistors and which increases the power of computers than the vacuum tubes they are mainly slow and compared to the third generation so work quicker and also smaller and more reliable in the third generation so in the second generation they use the transistors right so here they use the integrated circuit so in the next generation that is fourth generation you can see fourth generation the invention of the microprocessor so here you can see the picture of microprocessor brought along fourth generation of the computer in the year of 1971 to 1980 they introduced the microprocessor for the computer mainly for the processing speed to speed up the processing of the information in this fourth generation mainly the programming languages they are used c c++ java the programming languages utilize the this generation of the computer that is microprocessor they used so and the last generation that is fifth generation so we already in the generation of the fifth that is fifth generation that is artificial intelligence means intel so here you can see these computers have been utilized since 1980 so 1980 had also continuation to be used now so we are currently in the fifth generation this is the present and also future of the computer world and also definition of the aspect of this generation is the artificial intelligence that is ultra large scale integration ulsi so we can say ulsi and also presently we are used in the notebook and also laptops and some advanced computers and also some advanced processors means i7 or i5 i3 so in this generation we can see the artificial intelligence these are all five generations of the computers so let's have a look once for a quick revision so here you can see five generation and the time period so in the 1940 to or 1945 to 1955 we can also say so and the second generation 1956 to 1963 and 1954 to 1971 and also 1971 present and the last generation that is fifth generation present future and also here you can see what are all the technology they introduce in the first generation they used vacuum tubes second generation transistor third generation integrated circuits and the fourth generation microprocessor and the last one artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence is nothing but the computer doesn't have their own capable of thinking as a human we have to provide the intelligence to the computer that is all about the artificial intelligence in the next slide we can see what are all the input devices what are all the output devices so basically we have to get to know what you mean by input so as i already told in the block diagram of the computer when we give the input means the raw data or the information through the some equipments or the hardware equipment these are all called as a input or input devices so here you can see input device is a piece of hardware that sends and controls signals to the computer so without the input device we can't pass the parameters or else the information to the computer so consider one example if you have a cell phone the touch is not work touch is a input right so without the touch we can't open any application in the mobile right likewise in the computer also there are some input devices let's see what are all the input devices the first one keyboard second one mouse and also scanner microphone and also many more so here you can see the first one keyboard a basic and popular input device that allows user to input text and commands into the computer right so for example in the keyboard you can see function keys that is f1 to f12 these are all functions keys and arrows keys so upwards downwards rightwards leftwards and downwards so these are all the arrow keys and also numbers 
zero to nine, and also a to z, and also small letter a to z. These are all the keys under the keyboard. And also the next one is mouse. Mouse is a pointing device. Mainly mouse is a pointing device. So a popular input device that allows user to navigate. Means we control. Or else for the mainly for the clicking purpose we use by clicking the and moving the mouse in the window. And the next one is scanner. So scanner that converts the physical any physical documents in a digital format or the soft copy we can say in another word soft copy or a digital copies that is by the scanner and the next one microphone a device that can capture audio inputs for a recording or voice control which capture the audio so that is called a microphone which is also input device so another next input device we can see joystick touchpad touch screen and also webcam so what do you mean by joystick so joystick is mainly used in a video games or a gaming sections so a device that looks like a ball with two ends often used for playing games and computer aided design that is CAD. So mainly for the video games to control a video game we use a joystick. The next one is touch screen. So touch screen is nothing but a, instead of the mouse we can use a finger also. So that is called touch screen. So in laptop also we can see touch screen. And in mobiles also we can see touch screen, right? So likewise, a device that uses your finger to click directly on the screen and often has virtual keyboard that appears. So when needed. And the last one, webcam. A device that can record both audio and also video in integrated into laptops and monitor display. So in some applications, when you have to submit some application, they capture your live video or when you attend some exams, they capture your videos. So under the webcam, right? That is all about the webcam. These are all the comes under the input devices. So let's see how it will looks like with the image. So here you can see some input devices with the visual pictures. So this is keyboard and this is mouse, joystick and also that is trackball. Trackball is also a one of the input device and also scanner and also touch screen that is webcam that is microphone. So these are all comes under the input devices. The next one is output devices. So after the processing of information by using the output devices the information will be displayed in a user's desired format. For example, visually or graphically or as the PDF format or as the text format. These are all the desired user formats. So output devices convert data from a computer in a form of people can understand such as audio, visual or as a physical copy. So let's see what are all the examples or as the what are all the devices under the output devices. Monitor, printer, speaker. So monitor is nothing but display text, images and also videos on a screen. It is also known as a visual display unit that is VDU. So printer, printer is nothing but produces a hard copy whatever the after the scanning. For scanner is a input device right. So after scanning we got a digital format. That digital format documents we can print as a hard copy through the printers. And also speakers output audio from the computer for a audio purpose. And the next devices are projector. So projector is nothing but display the image or videos on a large screen such as a presentation or a movies. So you already get to know in the movies they project the videos, right? So this is all about the projector. And the next one is headset. So headset is also output devices, output audio from the computer for private listening such as music or also moving or also gaming. The next one is plotter. So a plotter is type of output device that used to produce a high quality of graphics. For example, banners or also a hero or as a heroine banners. So these are all the some high quality graphics drawings and large format images they use the plotters and plotters are commonly used in a engineering means architectural designs and also other industries they can use this plotter to produce a higher quality of the images. So these are all the output devices. So let's see image how it will be looks like.
So here you can see monitor and also printer, speaker, headset and also this is the plotter. This is how the graphic images will be drawing. So through the plotters in a large scale, not in a small scale, in a large scale. So these are all the output devices with the visual. So next we can see peripheral devices. So peripheral devices is nothing but how the external devices that connects the computer to enhance its capability. Peripheral device can be what are all the peripheral devices are input device, output device and also some network device. So let's see one by one input device. In the previous slide you already get to know what are all the input device which takes the input will be passed into the computer such as through the some devices keyboard, mouse, scanner, microphone. These are all the input devices. And the next one output devices. These devices receives the information from the computer and send it to such as printer, speaker for the output display purpose we use the output devices. And the next one is storage devices. So after the processing any data information from the input and also output information, the data will be stored after the processing. So such as external hard drives and also flash drives. So in hard drives, there are some devices for the memory also means storage also. In the next upcoming slides, we get to know. And also network devices. So network devices is nothing but for providing the internet facility to the computer. We use the ethernet, routers and modems under the network devices. These are all the connected. Connected means, for example, this is your computer. So which connects the input devices input devices and also connect the network devices and also storage devices. So this is how the computer will connect all these devices, storage devices, network devices and also input and also output devices. These are all peripheral devices. So next one is computer memory. This is also one of the most important topic. Listen carefully. So memory is nothing but. So for example, after processing any data, we have to store for a future use, right? So for that, we need a memory. So in a computer, we can see a memory is just like a human brain. It is used to store our data and also instructions. Computer memory is the storage space in the computer. Data to be processed and instructions to be processed for the storage purpose. So let's see what are all the some characters of the computers. It is faster computer memory as compared to secondary memory. So and also it uses some semiconductor devices to store the data. And it is usually volatile memory and main memory of the computer. And computer system cannot run without the primary memory. In the memory we have two sections. So primary memory, secondary memory and also one another memory is cache memory. So let's see one by one. In the so here you can see diagrammatical representation of the memory. The first one primary memory that is internal. Secondary memory is mainly for the external means hard drive, flash drive, pen drives, USB. This all comes under the secondary memory. And here you can see under the RAM, SRAM and also DRAM and also under the ROM types and also magnetic storage means hard drive disk and also optical disk and also flash drives. This is the graphical representation and the next one primary memory. So what do you mean by primary memory? Primary memory is, is as the main memory in the computer. It communicates directly with the CPU. So beside the CPU it will present. So that is why primary memory is fast. When I fetch the data from the primary memory, the processing speed will be fast and also fetching speed is also faster than the secondary memory. Catch auxiliary memory, it allows immediate access from the temporary memory slots. So under the primary memory, we can see two main types that is RAM and also ROM. So let's see what are all the RAM and also ROM. So RAM is hardware that temporarily stores data and programs. It uses faster of the main memory. So as I already told, primary memory is the main memory. So it fetches the data very faster because it present beside the CPU. So again, we have two types under the RAM that is DRAM and also SRAM. DRAM means dynamic RAM and SRAM means static RAM. DRAM full form dynamic random access memory. So RAM is nothing but random access memory. So it is a type of RAM, it uses dynamic data storage because dynamic is nothing but it will keep on changing, right? So after one storing, again we can 
erase the data and again we can store the data. That is dynamic. Every cell in DRAM consists one bit information, a cell composed transistors and capacitors. So this DRAM is made up of transistor and also capacitors. And this capacitor and transistor are external small in size and we have to need refresh. So as I already told, dynamic RAM we have to keep on refreshing so to store the data in DRAM and come to SRAM that is static RAM this is also the subtype of the RAM that is random access memory so this type of RAM stores static data static means it will stagnate so once the data will be stored we need not to refresh the memory to store the again data so which remains active until there is a power supply so this is one point we have to observe carefully. So difference between DRAM. So in the DRAM we have to refresh the memory. So in SRAM we need not to refresh the memory to store data. And in SRAM we have to keep on supply the power to store the data until the power supply the data will be stored in SRAM. But here in DRAM no need of power supply. Same size SRAM chip holds lesser data. In DRAM we can store larger data but compared to SRAM, SRAM only stores a small amount of data. So unlike DRAM, it doesn't require a continuous refresh. So let's see ROM. So ROM is one of the again type of the primary memory. ROM is read only memory is a permanent storage memory. So RAM is a temporary storage memory and ROM is a permanent storage memory. So that reads stored information, but it doesn't contain the capability of modifying means writing data. It's a non-volatile memory and information that power cut or when the system has been shut down ROM of the following. So these are all again we have some five types of the ROM. The first one is MROM. So it is the oldest ROM whose data pre-configuration Viva integrated circuit manufactured during the time of manufacturing. Due to this pre-configuration the user cannot change the instruction stored within the MROM chip. So, so once the data will be stored in the MROM, we cannot erase the data. That is the oldest ROM. And the next type is PROM. PROM is nothing but a, a programming ROM. So it is a digital ROM which can once allow writing any information or program. This is done using a special PROM. So burner devices. So we can program once. And the next subtype is, so here you can see EP-ROM. So EP-ROM means electrically programmable ROM. So in this type of ROM, data can be erased as well as the reprogrammed only once. It can store data for a minimum 10 to 20 years. And also to erase and reprogram EP-ROM, the user need to pass UV light for 40 minutes. For example, I already store data and I want to erase the data and I have to read or else I have to write some another data. We have to, in that case, we have to pass a UV light to erase the previous data. So to write the new data up to 40 minutes. So that is what EP-ROM means. That is we have to use the UV lights up to 40 minutes. And the next one is EEP-ROM. So erasable electrically programmable ROM. So erasable means, so we already get to know what do you mean by erasing. The full form of EP is electrically erasable and programmable read-only memory. It is an electrically erasable and also programmable ROM. This allows data to be erased using a high voltage electrical charge. Means here we use not a UV lights, we use a electrical signals to erase the data that is called EEP-ROM and after this it can be reprogrammed. So, thousand times. So, in EP-ROM we can see, so erasable programmable ROM. But here EEP-ROM electrically erasable programmable ROM. So, we can use the, instead of UV lights, we use the electrical signals to erase the data and again we can reprogram the data in EEP-ROM chips. And here you can see the pictorial representation of the RAM and also ROM. So, this is RAM. And also these two are the ROM designs or the pictures. So next see what are all the secondary devices that is permanent storage 
devices we can also say permanent storage devices so secondary storage devices or the secondary memory it is a permanent type of memory means permanent type that holds a large amount of data than the primary memory which has a finite number of memory storage but here this is the external memory that represent the different storage media for the program and also we can store the files and also external devices such as cds usbs and also some devices so let's see one by one what are all the devices the first one hard disk so hard disk a type of permanent memory that stores the program files and also data it is stored on the motherboard of the computer and doesn't lose the data even when a power outage means even when the power cut off suddenly the data will be stored why because this is the hard drive or else we called hdd so when the computer is switched off also or as some power cut in that case also we can see the data in hard drive so compact disk it is an optical storage devices that stores different type of data such as audios videos images files and other information cd uses slides to read and write data from the cds so when we use the cd we have to read the data or else the write the data we have to use the lights so then only we can read the data from the cds so let's discuss about the another two secondary devices that is what pen drive and also floppy disk so let's discuss about the what do you mean by pen drive this portable device is a type of secondary memory so a computer is used for the permanent storage so pen drive is a we also called a we need a usb so to connect a pen drive so and also storing data it is also known as usb flash drive and it will be stored and transfer the files so with the uh, presence of the computer and also cell phones so let's dis uh, discuss about the floppy disk a floppy disk is a secondary storage devices it is also one of the hardware devices that consisting of a thin and also flexible magnetic coat disk so which will be like a rectangular box in a rectangular you will contain a like it looks like a pocket device it will contain a magnetic coat to store a data and also it will be available in a three devices the first one is 3.5 inches and also 5.5 inches and also 6 inches it will be available in a three devices so here you can see how it will be looks like the secondary storage devices so this is uh, sd cards and also this is hard drives and also this is floppy disk this is pen drive cds and also some cassettes so these are all the storage devices means secondary storage devices and the last memory is cache memory so cache memory we called a temporary memory so it is a type of high speed why because we called a high speed so here you can see this is your cpu so after the cpu only the cache memory will be present this is the cache memory so after that the main memory will be there main memory so the processing speed will be faster because after the cpu only the cache memory will be present so the data transfer will be faster than the main memory why because cpu and cache memory will be very near so it is a type of high speed semiconductor memory that can help the cpu run faster between the cpu and the main memory it serves as a buffer so here you can see between the main memory and also cpu it will act as a buffer so it is used to store data and program that can cpu uses most frequently for example i need a frequent data very fastly so we can store in a cache memory so we can access the data very faster than the main memory and also secondary storage devices so let's see the what are all the main difference of the primary and secondary memory the first difference is it is also known as temporary memory this is permanent memory because why we use a chips and also transistor to store data but here we use a external devices even when the power is not supply or power cut off suddenly the data will be stored that's why it's a permanent this is a temporary data can be accessed by the processor or the cpu directly so these are all present so beside the cpu only so that's why the accessing time will be much faster than the secondary memory 
directly by process or CPU because uh, the data transferation little bit slow compared to primary memory. Store data can be volatile and non-volatile. So the nature of secondary is a non-volatile and it is more costly than secondary memory. It is less costly because it uses some circuits and also some transistor chips. So that's why it will be more costly. But here we only the primary memory which uses only devices that is hard drive. So which is compared to lesser means small amount of data. So it is faster memory and also it is slower memory. It has limited storage capacity. Here we can store up to terabytes and also gigabytes of memory. So and the next is that is larger capacity. It is a limited storage. The power or retained data. It requires the power. If a data is retained, so we have to pass the power. So here we no need to pass the power. Even when the power is cut off, we can store the data in secondary memory. So let's see the examples RAM, ROM and also DRAM, SROM, EPROM. These are all the examples for the primary memory. For the secondary memory, we already discussed in the previous slides that is CD, hard drives and also pen drives, USB. These are all the examples for the secondary memory. So in this session, we already get to know what is the meaning of computer and also some characters of the computers and also input and output devices and also peripheral devices and block diagram of the computer and memory units and also generations of the computer and history of the computer. These are all the topics covered in this session. So in the next session, we get to know what is the languages used by the computers and also translators and also some softwares under the computer. So thank you.